Welcome all to Mega Movie Drive-In. As you can see, we're doing stuff a little different this season. We're going to try some new things. As you can see, I purchased my beautiful GTO. Like I said before, welcome all to season two. We kick it off right here at the drive-in with a gem about aliens making their way to destroy the Earth. And there's only one man that can stop them. Hugh Marlowe with his sidekick wife, Joan Taylor. This time the aliens are after our brains, not our blood. Not really too sure if that's going to go any better, though, to be honest with you. It's good to know they'll make better use of our brains than we do. The thing that i got to say right off the bat, everybody knows, and a lot of people love, but I just... I'm not into this one. I know that's kind of a bad way to start off this review at the drive-in. But as you can see, my partner is already asleep. We didn't even start it yet, and he's already out. That's dude, by the way. He comes and hangs out with us once in a while. Anyway, EVFS is a sci-fi movie from 1956, which we have in both black and white and color. So don't be confused if you wonder why once in a while you'll see it in black and white and then in color. Earth vs. the Flying Saucers was directed by Fred F. Sears, who also directed a ton of World War II movies, and everyone's favorite piece of shit, The Giant Claw, which we will get to at some point, I promise. Like all good 50s movies, we get a little backstory, the normal MO. We explore places we shouldn't, and we piss something off. And some stock footage. We begin our story with a possible high-speed car accident or sexual assault charge in progress. Whew. This guy's intense. This is our two main characters, Dr. Russell A. Marvin, played by Hugh Marlowe, and Carol Marvin, played by Joan Taylor. They just got married, and Russ can't even wait for that honeymoon. They're on their way back to work, which is kind of strange considering they just got married. I guess they must have went to the town hall and just said, F*** it. Let's head back to work after. Anyway, they're working on Operation Skyhook, which is launching research satellites into the orbit. On the way back, though, they run into our alien frenemies. Trying to figure out what they witnessed, they jump back in the car and head to the rocket launch. I want you to transcribe these notes for my report. Yes, boss. But there's one little thing first. Now that you're married, Dr. Marlin, the first thing you've got to learn is no more passes at the secretary's. This dude doesn't quit. Back at the lab, while going over their notes on a tape, they hear the flying saucer sounds. Russ. The saucer sound. It's on the tape. This helps them realize that they weren't totally high before when they heard this. Just as the rocket is about to launch, General Henley shows up, who is also Carol's father, who tries to get them to stop the launch, but right then, Russ and Carol inform him that they got married the night before. I guess he didn't ask for her hand in marriage beforehand. Classy. Ah, oh, my special barbecue. Mm-hmm. That's to make up for not telling you about our getting married. I guess that makes it up for not telling him. The general tells Russ that his satellites, at least 10 of the 11, have been shot down and are falling to Earth. They then tell the general they thought they saw a flying saucer, but he just brushes it off. Just then, they get word that their 11th satellite has gone missing. The next day they set up to launch one more, but the aliens show up to stop that. They are not fans of these rockets. The aliens destroy the base and capture General Henley. He tells the aliens to off, so they decide to drain his brains. Back at the base, Russ and Joan are the only two left alive, but they fear that this is the end. Russ makes his last report, and as the batteries are dying, he starts to notice a weird voice coming over the tape recorder. The tape. It is very urgent that we meet. We will appear tomorrow. The tape slows down so he's able to hear the alien message. Once they get free, they bring the tape to the Pentagon where the brass believes them, but they tell them not to make contact with the aliens. This is put down by Vice Admiral Enright, played by Thomas Henry. He assigns Major Hughes, played by Don Curtis, to make sure Russ doesn't do anything stupid. Which you know he's going to. Russ tries to make contact with the aliens. Carol tries to stop him, but is unable. So she gives Hughes a call. Hurry, please. Like you never seen the 
Hello? That's a great babysitter. It's Dr. Marvin, I don't want to lose my job. Hadouken! Russ gets his hands on his car and is able to speed off to meet up with the aliens. Carol Hughes and a random Chips Extra are able to catch up with him. The saucer people let the four of them on board and explain to them that they operate at a lot faster and higher rate than Earth. And of course, they plan to take over the Earth, and they shouldn't bother to try to fight back. And they've been watching over us, and have learned a lot by transferring information from our brains into their supercomputers. They demonstrate this by revealing what they did to Carol's dad. And then, the highway officer shows off. They want to meet with the world leaders to discuss the Earth's surrender. They have 56 days to do so. Instead of handing Earth over to the aliens, Russ has a better idea. He needs to invent a machine that spews out high-frequency sounds mixed with electronic surges because... science. Of course, the space aliens show up because they knew what they were doing the whole time because they were watching them. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. They try to make a getaway with a new mega gun. I don't know what else to call it, so we're going to call it that. But the aliens come for a visit. Russ figures it's time to give this thing a test run. But Hughes doesn't mess around either. We get a look at the ugly mothers. Mrs. Marvin, would you say something into the microphone? <laughs> Russ is able to use the alien suit, though, to help him perfect his weapon. But the aliens say, F 56 days. We're coming for you guys now. Now, I know in previous seasons, we've kind of used annoying pop songs to kind of emulate monster mutant bug sounds. This season, I think it's going to probably end up being ray guns and stuff. and they sure do construct a lot of these guns pretty quick considering we had one just a couple days prior. The final battle begins, here we go. The present danger is ended. Huh, that's it. The danger is ended. And that's pretty much it. Off in the... Wait, wait, wait. Final thoughts. Hold on. Will they come back again? Not on such a nice day. Ugh. Never mind. He's not worried. And that was Earth versus the Flying Saucers. Um, I have to be honest. Like I said in the beginning, uh, everybody knows this one. Everybody seems to love it. But I, I felt like the ending was kind of anticlimactic. And I know that's weird to start a season on, like, a downer. But, I don't know, man. This one just... It didn't do it for me. Special effects were awesome. Ray Harryhausen is always on top. He's the best. No one. No one has ever topped him. I mean, he took where Willis O'Brien came from and just raised it up like 500 bars. The guy is awesome. But... I don't know.
don't know. I think it's maybe because the main character, he kind of comes up with the plan, shows the army how to use his weapon, doesn't really use it, and they get rid of the aliens in this one. I don't know. That's a little weird to me. But what are you going to do? Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, share. Hey, do all that stuff, man. We love doing these videos, so let's keep them coming. And uh, here's to a season two. We'll see you around. Later.